Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the finest of the week community church. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. We are so happy and excited that you have decided to tune in to our morning worship service. Let us encourage you with a very familiar passage of scripture. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We know God has something wonderful and something good for you today in our morning service. If you're joining us by way of Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in giving to this ministry, we have three easy ways for your convenience. There's Cash App. Simply type in dollar sign TFWCC. You can also give at Givelify. In the search bar, type in the Finest of the Week Community Church. And lastly, you can give at our website. Type in www.tfwcc.org backslash give and tap on the square. Now it's time for our morning worship service. But before we go there, go grab, grab your kids. Go grab your husband, your wife, your friend, a neighbor. And let them share in the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you.
How many of you are glad to belong to God? That he hand chose every single one of us in this room. And he wraps us around in his love. And it's an, it's an unconditional love and an unexplainable love. Hallelujah. How many are just glad to be in the house of God on today? How many feel his presence in this place? Because he's the only reason why we come here. is to acknowledge him and to thank him and to worship him just because he's so awesome. Hallelujah.
and he's greatly to be praised. We serve an amazing God. We don't have to worry about him. We don't have to worry, does he see us? Amen, he sees us, he hears us, and he knows all about us. If we never open our mouth to ask him, the Bible says he already knows what we have need of before we ask him. He allows us to go through situations, but he's tempering us for that blessing. He's getting us ready for what he has in mind. He's fixing it so we won't squander what he gives us. He's fixing it so we'll appreciate what he gives us. If you could just hold on just a little while longer. If you could just wait just a little while longer. Don't go in the power. Don't go in your praise. Don't go in your worship. Don't go in your confidence. But hold on just a little while longer. It'll pay off after a while. God's good for it. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man he should just repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Has he not spoken it? Won't he make it good? You don't have to micromanage God. Just wait on it. 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 And while you're waiting, praise him. While you're waiting, give him the glory. While you're waiting, give him the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has a blessing. Hallelujah. His blessing is not because of me or because of, because of you. It's because of him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is not the message, but he told during the time of Abraham, he said he could swear by no other. He swore by himself. Hallelujah. The Bible says by two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. What two immutable things? His promise and his oath. His promise says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it up off of you, but his oath says, I'm going to tie myself to you till I bring the promise to pass. Uh, you ain't, oh, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. God loves us. He takes such good care of us. Hallelujah. That don't mean that everything's going to be wonderful. That don't mean you're going to always have what you think you need. But he takes such good care of us. Tell your neighbor, this is the best life this side of heaven. Even with the pain, even with the heartache, even with the distresses that we go through, even when we don't have, we don't have no food, God is still good. If you don't have no money, God is still good. If you don't have a honey, God is still good. If you don't have a way out, God will make a way out and he's still good. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Hallelujah. I've heard for the last almost 40 years of being saved, amen, people say if God never does another thing, he's already done too much. And that's true. But if he don't keep doing it, if he don't keep doing it, if he don't keep doing it, we'll end up back in the same place that we were. It's a sad connotation for us. But he keeps on doing great things for us. And I'm glad about it. We serve an amazing God. Hallelujah. We don't praise him because everything is all right. Everybody missed that. We don't praise him because everything is all right. Because a lot of things are going awry in our lives. The thing about praise is not contingent on what's happening in my life. It's not contingent upon how I feel in my body. It doesn't, it's not contingent on what I have in my pocket. But the Bible says we are commanded to give him the praise. Hallelujah. He desires and not only desires, but he demands the praise. Because he can do that. The very breath that we breathe comes from God. The fact that we're here is because of God. Amen. He created us. Amen. And we will praise him and give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for all our visitors that are here. We appreciate you. We love you. Amen. We thank God for all of you that are here. We thank the Lord for all of you that are watching by eChurch. Amen. We love you and we appreciate you. Amen. You may not be physically in the house of God. Amen. But you are physically in the body of Christ. 
and you are in the house of God, and God has made provisions for us. Give our e-audience a hand, praise everyone. Amen. I'm going to take a note from somebody else and tell you to text somebody. Amen. And let them know that the finest of the wheat, amen, is in service even right now as we worship God so we can have someone else to join in with us. Amen. Isn't that what it's all about? How many of us know if we didn't have not have the Lord, we wouldn't make it? So we need to make sure that other people have the same benefits that we do. But are privy, amen, to have, uh, have an option, amen, in their life. And that option is always Jesus Christ. Amen. I say again, praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for our amazing praise team. Can we say amen? <laughs> thank the Lord for our amazing ministry. I was saying ministerial, they always get at me. Our, minist <laughs> our ministers of music. Amen. Uh, amen. The person of Minister Anthony Strigglers and the person of Minister Chris Shelton. Amen. We thank God for them. I, I, I had an opportunity to be here for the uh, choir for the praise team rehearsal on Thursday. We ought to give them the praise. They take a lot of time, amen, to make sure, amen, that God is worshiped. And they don't just play instruments, they have an anointing, amen. It destroys the yoke. That's why by the time the word comes, it's not a lot of work for me to do because the Lord has already destroyed yokes through the music, through the singing. Amen. I'll give you a Bible for it if you just have to have it. In the Old Testament, amen, dealing with Elisha and Jehoshaphat, amen, and even Ahab, who the, 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 the prophet wasn't very particular about. They would had an issue and they needed some help and they looked for a prophet to prophesy. Amen. The prophet, when he got to Jehoshaphat and Ahab, he said, what about to do with you, Ahab? Amen. But he basically said, because you have Jehoshaphat with you. But then the, after that, the next thing that he said, bring me a minstrel. And the Bible says when the minstrel began to pray, he began to prophesy. Y'all got to know that it's a hookup in the music that God has put there. Amen. It's not just music just to be sound. It's not entertainment. Amen. But it's worship. Amen. And God moves through the music. Hallelujah. We thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's not the message. But hallelujah. We thank God just for being so good. Amen. We honor the Lord most of all in this house. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, and we know some things we've been through, some of us are still going through some things. We'd have been swallowed up a long time ago. But because God is so faithful, we thank him. In Jesus' name, we honor him. Amen. We're going to be turning to the book of Philippians on today. Amen. Chapter number 2, reading verse number 6 through verse number 9. 6 through 11. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6, 6 through 11. We'll ask you to stand with me as we reverence the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's read that. Amen. It says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made like it was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you even right now. We bless and we glorify you. We magnify and we lift you up, Jesus. We come to sit at your feet, God. We don't know what to do and how to do and where to do, hallelujah, except you give us directions, Lord. You say they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We thank you today that you are leading us and guiding us. And we're asking you, oh God, to bless today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you know every heart that's here, every heart that's listening by e-church. 
You know every need, you know every pain, you know every concern, you know every worry. You know every situation in their lives, Lord. And we're asking you, God, in the name of Jesus, to speak to each and every one of us, God. Lord Jesus, give us what we have need today, that in everything, in all things, you will be glorified. And Lord, we ask you to glorify yourself, Lord, through your servant, through your handmaiden, God. Let nothing that I would say come out of my mouth, but what you would want said. Use me, Lord God, for your service in the name of Jesus. Lord, say what you want to say the way you want to say it, oh God. And Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We ask you to preach today, Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Let not a man or a woman say anything, but you preach, Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Feed us today. Oh God, until we're full and over and overwhelmed with your word to be able to share it with someone else. And Lord, we bless you for it even right now. Strengthen my body, God. Hallelujah. Bear up beneath your, the load of your word and of your anointing and of your will, oh God, that only you would be glorified. And Lord, we thank you for it even right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, in the book of Philippians, chapter number two. Amen. Just read verse number 10. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I have, I believe, a thought that the Lord has dropped in my spirit. Amen. And once you turn to your neighbor by way of encouraging them and just tell them that and tell them this, that at that name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, say it again, that at the name of Jesus, let's say that again, that at the name of Jesus, amen. We understand, amen, the time that we live in, I'm sure we all do, amen. And I don't know how long some of us have been in the church and have been saved, amen. Some of us, I'm looking around, some of us 40, some of us maybe 50, <laughs> been, been in church since they were little babies, amen. But when I came into the church, uh, I was a preemie. I didn't have any understanding of the Bible at all. Some people say they come in babes. I was a preemie. But the church that the Lord allowed me to go to was an apostolic church. Amen. Didn't know the difference because I wasn't a church goer. But when I came into the church, there were mothers in the church and my pastor in the church. And as, we, as they began to teach us and mentor us, because I'm coming straight out of the world with no understanding of church procedures or anything else. Amen. Just straight up heathen. Amen. But they began to tell us, amen, after I was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, heard myself speak in tongues. They began to tell us that that name Jesus meant something. Amen. They taught us that when you pray, amen, even though he has titles, Lord God, Father, those are his titles. But they taught us if you want results, don't call him by his titles, but call him by his name. His name is Jesus. I was thinking on yesterday, amen, as the Lord was dealing with my heart concerning this, I was studying over some things, and what came to my mind is that everybody, no matter what they believe, if they if they say they have a God, they call him God. Are you with me? Everybody calls their God Elohim, which is the Hebrew word for God. That's why when you see in the Bible, when he's, the, uh, the writers are making the difference between the whole theos, which is Greek for God, as opposed to the other gods, which were false gods, they would mark that with a big G for the God and a little G for the false gods. Tell somebody there's a difference. Amen. When we look here, even in our text, and if you allow me to, just to go over 
a couple of words that I know you know the meaning to, but I like to do it in different in the, in the Hebrew and the Greek language that they're written in. And the, the word for name, amen, in the Greek is an, anoma, anoma. And it means generally the name by which a person or a thing is called. It is the name used for everything which the name covers. In other words, if I say food, you know what that is. You understand that. If I say water, that name is self-explanatory. It means every, everything or the thought of everything, the feeling that is aroused in the mind by mentioning or hearing or remembering that name. That name that is also for one's rank or authority or interest or pleasure or command or excellence or someone's deeds. The word in Hebrew for name is shame. Sounds real close. And it is an appellation. Basically, it is an identifier, amen, as a mark of memorial of, an in, of individuality. By implication, it is honor, it is authority, it is character. According to the Hebrew notion, a name is inseparable from the person of whom it belongs. It is something of his essence or his nature, if you will. In philosophy, it, the, de the definition is nature or character, amen. Philosophy says, is it a property of a group, amen, or properties of something which without which, if it would not, it would not exist if, if it did not have that label, or you would not be able to tell what it was. It should be noted in the Old Testament, amen, that names really spoke of the character and the reputation of a person or the one that carried the name. For an example, when you look at the name Adam, in the Hebrew is pronounced Adam. That name is the generic name for all mankind, amen. But it is also the name of a specific man, the first man, Adam, that God formed from the dust of the earth. It is his name. His name, if you look it up and search it, amen, it talks about the red man from the red earth which helps us to understand even what the scripture says, that God formed man from the dust of the earth. He named him in that respect. Adam was earthy. He is from the earth. The name Jacob, and we know that name very well. Amen. It means heel catcher. Amen. It means trickster. It means a supplanter. Amen. He followed his character, but his name was changed. But he followed that character because he was tricky. He tricked his brother out of, amen, his blessing. Not his birthright, he gave that away, but he tricked him out of his blessing. So his name, for that time, it held true to his character and his reputation. The word, the name, Nabal, <laughs> it actually means fool. We understand that there was a Nabal, amen, I almost said a fool, but I'm gonna say a Nabal. <laughs> In the Bible, the Bible talks about how that David, amen, as he was running from Saul, amen, at one point he came upon the place where Nabal had all of his, his lands and his cattle, and David didn't touch him, although he could have with all his men, he had mighty men. And the Bible says he sent humbly to <clears throat> Nabal to make provisions for his men, but the Bible says that Nabal, amen, I just leave it like that, Nabal didn't do that which was right and sent the men home back to David. David being angry, amen, got his men together, getting ready to wipe Nabal out, hallelujah. But the Bible says Abigail, his, his wife, amen, went before David, amen, could get to them with, with, with victuals and provisions for them and asked and pleaded for her husband. But the Bible says, amen, when he found out, when he stopped being drunk, amen, what was about to happen to him, that his, it said his, his heart turned to stone and he eventually died. His name meant Fool, read on that, amen. We understand, amen, there's another name dealing with David. David, the Bible gives a definition or the definition for David's name or the translation for David's name means beloved. And it, it, the true to the character of David, the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart, amen. 
He was one that loved God and never turned to a false God, but always took God as his God. Whether he was being punished for something or whatever it was, but he never changed up on God. He was beloved, amen, in the eyesight of God. Amen. There was a, a story, or not a story, but the whole book of a man, Ruth, deals with, and I've said this before, the way the, the, the Hebrews read their Bible, they're, they're heroes in these books. Amen. What we call a different name, but they're the heroes of the book. And we find in the book of Ruth, you find a man named Elimelech, or in, the, in English, Elimelech. Amen. But his name in Hebrew is Elimelech, and his name actually means, my God is king. You understand that the book of Ruth is dealing with the near kinsmen. Amen. And each one of the names of the people, amen, gives part of the story. So if you just knew the names and interpreted, interpreted the names, you understand what the whole book was about. Uh, his name, his wife's name was Naomi. Yeah. And her name meant pleasant until she lost everything. And she said, don't call me Naomi or pleasant. Uh, call me Maro, uh, which means bitter. Uh, amen. She was given a name to herself to wear her character had gone to. Uh, amen. They had two sons. One name was Mahlon and the other name was Chilon. Amen. And they both names meant something. Uh, amen. Mahlon's name meant amen sickly uh, or weakly. Uh, we understand if you look at the story that eventually Mahlon and amen Chilon died. Uh, amen. But the difference was Mahlon, amen, was married to Ruth. Uh, whose name meant friend, uh, who stuck with Naomi, yeah, amen, so she, amen, went back with Naomi, yeah, and had a near kinsman that kept Malone's name going, uh, so he had posterity even after his death, uh, but he, Leon, uh, who was married to Oprah, uh, her name meant the back of the neck, uh, doesn't that describe her when, when, when Naomi said, go back to your kinsman, uh, or go back to Moab, uh, the friend Ruth stayed with Naomi, uh, but amen, Oprah turned her back the back of the neck, uh, so names mean something uh, in the word of God, uh, hallelujah, uh, amen, but I want to present to you today, or propose to you today, uh, that the only name uh, that carries the authority, uh, that carries the character, uh, that carries the nature, uh, that carries the essence of God, uh, in this dispensation, uh, is the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Old Testament uh, had names uh, that were given by the people uh, that God had blessed. Uh, we know Abraham. Uh, you know the story can't do it, take too long. Uh, but how the Lord had a promised seed uh, and his name was Isaac. Uh, the Bible said that he was told by God uh, to offer up his son, his only son. Uh, and they went up to Mount Moriah. Uh, amen to offer up or he did uh, to offer up the promised seed uh, in whom God said all the nations of the world uh, would be blessed uh, the Bible said that he built brought the fire uh, and laid the wood in place on the altar uh, and laid his son tied on the altar uh, amen till his son said dad I see the wood uh, but where is the sacrifice uh, the Bible says he drew back the knife uh, amen to slay his son uh, the Bible says in the New Testament uh, believing that God if he took him uh, was also able to raise him up uh, but when he wrote, drew back the sword or, or the knife uh, to kill his son he heard a voice from heaven uh, called Abraham uh, Abraham uh, the Bible said that God said do not your son, son any harm uh, but there's a ram in the bush uh, the Bible says uh, that Abraham named that place uh, Yireh uh, or Jireh uh, in our English, uh, which means the God that does see uh, and does provide. Uh, tell the Lord, uh, tell somebody, uh, you're going through today, uh, but God does see you uh, and he will uh, provide. Mm, uh, hallelujah. Uh, we look at, uh, hallelujah, another example. Uh, when you look at Gideon, uh, hallelujah, in the Old Testament, uh, Gideon was a mighty man of valor. Uh, by the way, the Lord called him. Uh, 
but he was hiding out, uh, threshing wheat uh, and food uh, because an enemy uh, had surrounded them uh, and were keeping them from food. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he began to talk to him. God did. Let me slow it down. Begin to talk to Gideon and tell him all manner of things. Uh, and Gideon began to say, how is that? Uh, I'm back here hiding. Uh, you telling me I'm a mighty man of valor. Uh, I'm just trying to get something to eat. Uh, but he let them know you're going to be the vessel uh, that I'm going to use uh, to deliver my people. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Gideon fleece the Lord, uh, if you will. Uh, he said different things. Uh, but he said, Lord, if it be you, uh, he said, make this dry. Uh, talking about the fleece or make this wet. Uh, the Bible says when he realized it, uh, he was told to take the shoes off his feet. Uh, you know what that means from Moses. Uh, that meant that place was holy ground. Uh, he was talking to the God of glory. Uh, well, fear struck his heart. Uh, and he thought he was going to die. Uh, but the Bible says, uh, amen, that he put the, amen, the, the sacrifice that he had uh, up on a rock, which was food. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says uh, that God consumed, uh, amen, the sacrifice, uh, which meant he wasn't going to die. Uh, so he named that place. He named the place, uh, amen, shalom, uh, the God of peace. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus, uh, amen, David, uh, is a total different story, yeah, uh, he knew God, he knew God, uh, in so many ways, uh, the Bible says in the book of Psalms 139, uh, David began to talk to the Lord, uh, he said, whither, uh, shall I go from your spirit, uh, he said, if I make my bed in hell, uh, he said, thou art there, uh, what does he mean, Shama, uh, you're there. Uh, he said, if I take the wings of the morning uh, and go into the midst of the sea, uh, he said, even there uh, shall your hand find me uh, and lead me. Uh, David was saying, uh, Shama, uh, hallelujah. Uh, David knew God uh, as a rock. Uh, uh, he knew him as a shepherd. Uh, one that would protect him. Uh, one that would feed him. Uh, one that would him. Uh, he knew him uh, as to Shah, uh, one that was the Lord of hosts. Uh, he was mighty in battle. Uh, he was strong. Hallelujah. Uh, David knew him in different names. And they named him according to the provisions and the help that God gave them in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Many have inquired as to the name or the real name of Jesus Christ, or the real name of God, excuse me. The Bible helps us to understand that even Moses, in the third chapter of the book of Exodus, when God told him what he wanted him to do to deliver his people, and he went through all these types of conniptions, and the Bible says that he said, Lord, well, when I go back to, to Egypt, who do I say sent me? Uh, God answered him and said, tell them that I am that I am. Uh, depending on what dictionary you read, it will be the self-existing one. Uh, amen. In some places say, what is it to you? Uh, amen. But the Hebrew understanding is simply, uh, I become whom I become. Uh, whatever you need me to be, uh, that's who I am. Uh, if you need healing, uh, I am the healer. Uh, if you need help, uh, I am the only help. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible helps us understand. Uh, amen. That Jacob uh, also asked his name. Uh, the Bible says, amen, when Jacob was on his way back. Uh, amen from hiding out with Laban. Uh, amen. He had sent his family on. Amen. Would, amen. To be with his uh, to meet his brother. Uh, the Bible said he stayed behind uh, and he wrestled with the angel. Uh, the Bible says he prevailed with the angel. Uh, amen. He was given a new name. He was called Israel. Uh, but then he turned and asked God. Uh, he said, what is your name? Uh, I like it because the Bible says uh, or doesn't say what he told him uh, concerning his name. So in other words, uh, he didn't even 
tell him what his name was. Uh, he just simply blessed him. Uh, there was a man named Manoah. Now, who was the father of Samson. Now, we know the story, yeah, how he was dumb. Now, amen, until Samson was born. Now, the Bible says uh, that Manoah inquired, uh, hallelujah, what is your name? Uh, and the Lord answered him. Uh, he said, why ask thee after my name? Uh, seeing it is secret. Uh, the Bible says uh, in the book of Isaiah, uh, amen, it gives us uh, what his name shall be called. Uh, it says, Isaiah 96, it says, uh, for unto us a son is given, a child is born. Uh, unto us a son is given. Uh, and the government uh, shall be upon his shoulders. Uh, and his name shall be called uh, Wonderful. Uh, that term wonderful uh, is the same Hebrew word uh, for secret. Uh, it meant miraculous. Uh, it meant marvelous. Uh, it meant wonderful. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, wonderful counselor. Uh, the mighty God. Uh, the everlasting Father, uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, Isaiah 714 says, uh, Therefore the Lord uh, himself uh, shall give you a sign. Uh, he said, Behold, uh, a virgin uh, shall have a, son, a child uh, and shall call his name uh, Emmanuel. Uh, the same is in the book of Isaiah. Uh, but with the understanding uh, that Emmanuel means uh, God with us. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter number 21, uh, verse number 1, uh, the name is declared uh, for our dispensation. Uh, for the Bible says, He shall, uh, she shall uh, bring forth the Son uh, and shall call his name uh, Jesus. Uh, for he shall save uh, his people uh, from their sins. Uh, if you look up uh, the name Jesus, uh, it comes from the form uh, of the word in the Old Testament. Uh, Joshua uh, or Yehoshua. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, it has a root. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it means deliverer. Uh, it means savior. Uh, it means protector. Uh, it means one that gathers uh, you in safety. Uh, that's what Jesus uh, actually means. Uh, he is the deliverer. Uh, he is the savior. Uh, the Bible says, uh, neither their salvation uh, in any other. Uh, for there is no other name uh, among heaven uh, given among men uh, whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, in reference to his name, in St. John 14 and 13, it says, and whosoever and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, what's the name? That will I do that my father may be glorified in the son. He said, if you ask anything in my name, what's the name? He said, I will do it. Uh, John, sir, John 4 and 14 says, uh, and this is the confidence uh, that we have in him. Uh, that if we ask anything uh, according to his will, uh, he said, he heareth us. Uh, he said that if ye know, uh, if we know uh, that he heareth us, uh, whatsoever we ask, uh, we know that we have uh, our petition uh, that we desire of him. Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, there is a word. Uh, not a word, but there is a name. Uh, hallelujah, there is a word. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was the word. Uh, the Bible says, uh, in the beginning uh, was the word, uh, and the word was with God, uh, and the word was God. Uh, the same was in the beginning with God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, uh, all things uh, were made by him, uh, and without him, uh, there was not anything made uh, that was made. Uh, amen. God uh, allowed people uh, in the Old Testament uh, to give him all types of names. Uh, but in the New Testament, uh, where we are, uh, he named uh, himself. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he knew uh, what we need. Uh, he knew uh, when we needed. Uh, the Bible says, uh, and I get ready to close, uh, who be in the form uh, of God. Uh, in other words, he had the nature uh, and the essence uh, of God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, thought it not robbery uh, to be equal uh, with God. Uh, why not, Pastor? Because uh, he was God. 100% uh, man. 100% uh, God. Uh, 
in verse number seven, nah, but made himself nah, of no reputation. Nah. In other words, nah, he put his glory nah, to the side. Nah. He emptied himself nah, of his glory nah, and took on nah, the form of a servant. Nah. He morphed, nah, that's the Greek word. Nah. He became nah, a doulos, nah, a slave. Nah. Hallelujah. Nah. Huh, of men. Huh. Why'd you do that, Jesus? Huh. Because if you go back to Ruth, huh, the only one huh, that could deliver huh, or buy back huh, a slave huh, had to be huh, a near kinsman. Huh. So he didn't come like an angel. Huh. He didn't come in glory, huh, but he was made likened huh, unto his brethren. Huh. He is huh, our near kinsman. Huh. Jesus, uh, hallelujah, uh, then it says, uh, and being found uh, in the fashion uh, of a man, uh, he humbled himself, uh, he abased himself, uh, the God of glory uh, that lives in heaven, uh, that created uh, the heavens and the earth, uh, he brought himself down uh, just for you and I, uh, and became obedient uh, even to death. That we survive. 
It's in that name. Tell somebody it's in that name. Tell somebody else it's in that name. Tell somebody it's in that name. If you want rejoice, if you need results, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling broken, if you don't have no way to take care of yourself, remember the name. Call on his name. Just stand with me today and just call Jesus. 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 He won't get tired of you calling his name. Jesus. Jesus. He gave us the name to call him. Hallelujah. We're not bad men. Followers with the light might not see the light, but we can get in our corners and call Jesus. We can say it low. Jesus. We can say it loud. Jesus. No matter how you say it, internally, when you can't open your mouth, think Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It's all. In that name. Don't stop using the name. He gave himself that name. If you call on that name, things will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is he Lord God? Yes. Is he Father God? Of course he is. But he's told us to call on that name. You want me? Call me. Call me by my name. I already know what you have need of, but it's something about when I hear my name out of my beloved. Who's the beloved? All of his people. When I hear you call my name, y'all know how y'all like to hear somebody that you love call your name. Don't it sound sweet to you? Imagine what it sounds coming from here. All the way to glory. Jesus. If you don't even know what to pray, just get on your knees and say, Jesus. 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 You can call him in the morning. You can call him in the noonday. You can call him in the midnight hour. He knows who's calling his name. He's not confused with one side of the earth to the other. Well, I call him. He's not confused what you called him for. I need him for one thing. You need him for something else. I don't know how his ears are set up, but he can differentiate between every call. What we call his name, Jesus. One name, but the answer to every problem. One name, but deliverance for everybody. One name, but he'll supply every need. Jesus is Gamma. He is the Lord that is there. Jesus is Shalom. He is the God of peace. Jesus is Jireh. He is the God that does see and provide. Jesus is Elion, the Most High, the owner, the operator of everything we see is in that name. You ought to give him the praise. You ain't got to remember. If you hold this in titles, all you need to call him is Jesus. Now somebody is in that name. Tell somebody it's in that name. Whatever you need, it's in that name. Whatever problem you have, the solution is that name. Tell somebody, I know the name. Tell somebody, I know the name. I've got solutions. I know the name. I may need money. I know who to call. I may, I may need healing. I know who to call. Can somebody just help me call his name? Can somebody just help me call his name? Just lock eyes with somebody and tell them, I know the password. I know the secret code. You think I can't get in here? You think I won't get this money? 
You think I won't get this healing? Tell somebody ask me what the code is. It's Jesus. Tell somebody his name is Jesus. That's the answer. That's the key. Somebody help me celebrate Jesus. Somebody help me glorify Jesus. Somebody help me magnify Jesus. Somebody help me exalt Jesus. 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 Somebody lift him up. It's in that name. It's in that name. That at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Can I tell you what bow in addition to those knees? Your problem's gonna bow. Your sickness is gonna bow. Your sickness is already bowed. Your problem is already on the floor. Jesus already humbled this situation. He's just waiting for you to call his name and give him the glory. Tell somebody, Jesus already handled the problem. Ask him, will you praise him for it? Will you glorify him for it? Somebody lift up the name Jesus. Jesus is in the room. He's in the room. All you have to do is reach up and grab it. Ask him for it. He's in the room. He's in the building. It's in his name. It's in his name. Jesus will fix it for you. Jesus will handle it for you. If you find yourself stuck this week, just call his name. See if he'll show up. Give us a take it. Jesus has you covered. Somebody put your hands together. Let's exalt Jesus in this place. Let's worship Jesus in this place. The bishop felt like preaching today. It's in that name. Jesus. The answer to your problem is in that name. And the Lord is calling somebody this morning and he wants to call you by his name. He wants to appropriate his name to your life with his blood. So if you're here and you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, that's why it's significant. The Bible says that there is not salvation in any other name. It is in the name of Jesus. Are we Jesus only? Absolutely. Because it's in that name. That's who has the power. That's who have the, has the authority. And we're not making distinctions, the Bible says, in the fullness of the body, the God, in Jesus dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When you take on Jesus, you take on everything. And when you're baptized in his name and you receive his spirit, you take on his power. You take on his authority. The authority is in the name. That's why you have to have it. If you go to a bank and try to use a card and your ID doesn't match what's on that card, they're not going to let you use it. Why? Because you don't have the authority. But Jesus came, snatched the keys of death, hell, and the grave. 
and declare that all power, all authority is in my hand. And so that's why we must, Peter said, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. And when you fully believe and repent, he will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is there one? If you're watching and you haven't had that experience, you can, there's a number on the bottom you can call. Call that number. If you don't get someone, leave a message. We'll get back to you. If you're watching on Zoom, get in the comments. Let us know you want to apply that name, Jesus, to your life. Everybody's standing. Everyone's standing. Just wave at somebody and say, it's in his name. It's in that name. Look at somebody else and tell them, I'm going to have a good week in Jesus' name. I'm going to be healed in Jesus' name. I believe I'm going to come into some money in Jesus' name. I believe I'm going to come into a new level of anointing in Jesus' name. I believe I'm going to make uh, some things that are going to disappear out of my life. Why? Because I'm doing it in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the privilege of calling you by your name, Jesus. Jesus. God, we don't say it lightly, but we count it a privilege. Not everybody knew your name. And the fact that you thought enough of us to tell us your Jesus. How sweet a name. We honor you. God, we thank you. We lift our hands in reverence to your name. God, we're not waiting to bow. We'll bow now. We bow in our spirits at that name. God, we honor you and we thank you. And God, we're coming and we're asking God that you move on our behalf. God, some of us are facing situations that are seem insurmountable, but all things bow at that name. And God, so we come this morning to declare your name. You've given us that, us that ability, that authority to use your name. So God, we're using your name this morning against sickness. We're using your name against disease. We're using your name against broken hearts. We're using your name against mental distress. We're using your name against cancer. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We're using your name against diabetes. We, we're using your name against the spirit of suicide. Satan, the Lord rebuke you at the name. You might also take it. At the name. At the name. Jesus. Whatever we're facing, God, humble it right now at your name and by your authority, by your spirit, by your power. It's not by power. It's not by might, God, but it's by your spirit. Do it now in your name, Jesus. And we'll bless that name. We'll glorify that name. We'll magnify. Somebody help me bless the wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Remember Bible study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Join us next Sunday morning right here at the finest of the week. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. God bless you.